Rooftoppers, Chapter 16, Part 3 of 3. Sophie checked the laces round her waist were tightly knotted. Then, Matteo, she said, where did you learn all this? Accidentally, mostly. Practice. Matteo lifted his shirt. A purplish scar ran from his belly button to his ribcage. Trial and error. My God, how did you do that? Falling on a weather vane? And this one, he showed a bruise, still a fresh green on his shoulder, was when I fell into a chim onto a chimney pot. Does it hurt? Of course, he shrugged. We bleed more often than most people. It's not the end of the world. Oh. Then she said, Matteo, who is we? The look in his face was so different, so suddenly, that Sophie stepped back. Me, he said. I said me. Matteo took off again. This time, when he reached the gaps between rooftops, he jumped without waiting for her to for her or looking back. So if he had to stop to gather her courage before each one, they would have been nothing on the ground, but up high, they took all the nerve she had. Soon, she was a roof's length behind. Can we slow down, please, just a little? No, said Matteo. He pushed his hair from his eyes in order to glare at her and sped up. After half an hour, Matteo did slow. When he turned to face her, he seemed to have regained his temper. He said, this is the last gap. It's the next building. By now, Sophie felt like an old hand. Do we jump? She pushed back her hair and crouched. No, Arette, Sophie, stop. What? What's wrong? You can't jump onto that roof. It's a, I don't know the word, a crumbler. What do you mean? The parapet is too old to jump onto. The tiles snap off. Oh, goodness. Sophie stared at the gap. It wasn't very wide, it was true. But it was a long drop to the ground. I know, it's so good. It's why I chose to live here. It means nobody can follow unless they know. If you were to jump without knowing, you'd die, I think. Do you realise that's not very reassuring? It was dark, but she thought Matteo smiled. I don't bother too much about reassuring. Sophie realised she'd been holding her breath. She gulped in air. It was surprising what a difference oxygen made to bravery. How do you get across? She asked. It's easy. You step. Jumping was one thing. It was a rush and a gasp and it lit up your insides. Slowly stepping across nothingness was quite another. She tried to imagine it. I can't. I'll have to jump it, she said. Terror rose up in Sophie's throat. It tasted green. That's too wide to step. No, not for you. Your legs are like drain pipes. They're not. That was a compliment. You were born for rooftops. And anyway, legs stretch wider than you think. I just don't know if I can. You said you were good at heights. I am. How dare he, Sophie thought. We've come miles and I'm covered in blood and soot. And I didn't stop once. So, it doesn't count if you don't get to the end, he said. He laid a hand on her shoulder. Sophie leapt away. Don't you dare push me. Matteo was unpredictable. It occurred to her for the first time that rooftops and unpredictable people are a dangerous mix. I wasn't going to, he hissed, and keep your voice down. Sorry, I'm sorry. She peered over the edge again. Okay, tell me what we do. I'm not saying I'll do it, though. Okay, first you close your eyes, said Matteo. Matteo, we're on a rooftop. Close your eyes. If you keep them open, you'll look down, and if you look down, you'll fall. Oh. Sophie closed them. Ah, I'm going to lead you to the edge. Are your eyes closed? Yes. In fact, Sophie was peering down under her lashes. She could see her bare feet approaching the edge. No, they're not. Close them properly. It will be easier, I promise you. I hold I hold the back of your nightdress so you can't fall. And you take a step. How big? About the length of a pig. The length of a pig, thought Sophie. She was going to die because she had never looked properly at a pig. You'll be fine. You're safe. Matteo sounded unusually serious. Keep your eyes shut. Sophie extended one leg into the gap. They're shut, she said. And this time it was true. Gripping onto his arm, she stuck her leg out into nothing. It waved around and it still met. And still it meant nothing. Sophie shot her leg back and stepped away from the edge. That's wider than a pig, Matteo. The length of a pig. Pigs are quite long. Shake out your leg. I've got you. Try again further? Yes. Sophie was almost doing the splits when her foot connected with the far edge. Now what? She tried not to sound panicky, but her weight had shifted to somewhere over her knees. Too far forward to pull it back, and she felt she might twist backwards into nothing any second. And if anyone was walking in the tiny alley beneath, they would be able to see her pants up her nightdress. This was why everybody should wear trousers, she thought. This. Now, you let go of me, said Matteo said, and... What? No! Don't you? Just for a second. Matteo had already detached himself and I step. There was the lightest of thumps. A squirrel would have made more noise. And you give me your hand. Sophie did so and blushed. It was slippery with sweat. And I pull you over. His tug was startling, startlingly strong. 
and she was dragged shoulders and arms and knees all together across the gap. And now, said Matteo, you stand up, and you wipe your hands, he grinned. You could water plants with your palms. Come on, we're almost there. You said this was the last one. You said this was it. We. Oui. I lied. 